guys we've got the M1 today and we're going to do a little bit of load development working with 4064, 47 and a half grains and a 155 grain burger hybrid and 155 Sierra tipped match kings. We've got the 1903 Springfield that I'm going to be doing the velocity checking with to make sure that we're well within specific machine gun ammunition. Twenty six eighty eight. Okay, now here is using that same case with forty seven point five grains of forty sixty four and a one fifty five grain burger. Twenty six ninety nine. So now this is part of the fun experiment. Twenty six ninety nine, right? Now we're going to be firing same powder charge with a Hornady case. Should be less. The last one was twenty six ninety nine. Look at that. Twenty five eighty three. Wow. Hundred feet per second difference. Now let's just see if that was an anomaly. That's now. Twenty-five, sixty-nine. We're going to do a five-shot group with the slower Hornady first, and this is an eight-round end block. They offer fives, but that's not really necessary. You can uh, you can load these. Keep your hand on the op rod. <laughs> okay. Here goes the ping. Okay, here's here's the first five using forty seven point five grains, forty sixty four. And a 155 burger. Now we're going to try using those mill spec cases, which provides a little more velocity. We'll see if that tightens this group up at all. We have five of the 88 head stamp cases, which weigh 15 grains more. Notice more recoil, and my form was kind of lousy on that, but we'll take a look and see what kind of group we got. Okay, that's the same powder charge 
using those mil spec cases which weigh 200 grains. John Guerin was born in 1888. He was uh, in a family with 12 siblings. Imagine 14 people running around the same house. And when he was 21, he went to work for a tool company called Brown and Sharp. And Brown spelled the same way totally brown is, which I thought was kind of funny. And during that time, he was probably dreaming of making <laughs> semi-automatic and fully automatic firearms. Imagine John Moses Browning was probably one of his heroes. And uh, this this gun actually, uh, when Garin went to work for the Springfield Armory, he was in the process of finishing a. So, um, a machine gun for the military, but it wasn't able to be rolled out in time for World War I, so Springfield kept him on, and he proceeded to start to design and develop this. Everything from the fixtures that were required for mass production, the tooling that was required, the tolerances, the, you know, trying to control the rate of failure and those type of things, you know, what makes it break and let's fix it. And that went on over the course of 15 years and what you end up with is this is the result to where I can take this up to the range in 2018 and have it shoot a two inch two and a half inch group at a hundred yards still which is quite astounding the number on this is uh, in the 1943 era and it's a million, I think a million two or so. That would, but the, the serial number I checked it, and it was this was about May of 1943, and uh, just a really, really beautiful firearm. Garen worked for the Springfield Armory between 1919 and 1953, which back, you know, that's. Was that 34 years? And uh, Congress actually had applied to get him a hundred thousand dollars just out of appreciation. It was, but they realized what an impact his design had on the outcome of World War II, and just what an amazing individual. You know, people like this. It's not always the money that motivates you. And uh, you know, being the designer of this had to be quite exciting. So we're on our way back to the New York Mills Sportsman Club to shoot a little bullseye on the way home. And I don't even know if I'm going to be able to see the target, but uh, out of respect for the other shooters, you may only just see the, I'm going to just show you the range real quick and uh, my target because I don't want to make anybody mad with the video camera. And uh, But this is the club. And it's a nice club. It's right in the middle of kind of a box canyon here. And they've got uh, five stand Sporting clays, rifle range. They shoot falling plates, pistol. And uh, yeah. So we'll see. See what's up. Got the Garin, which is uh, two and a half inches. I know that's not a great group, but for uh, that front sight covering the whole, almost the whole paper at 100 yards, um, two and a half inches. I'm pretty happy with that. What was really sort of surprising is the Springfield. I had the Springfield. It has a finer front sight on it, and that was a 2.2 inch group. If you take out that one flyer, boy, you got a real nice group there, huh? But uh, 
I enjoyed making the video. If you guys if you guys liked it, give me a thumbs up. Maybe subscribe if you're a new viewer. And have a good weekend.